Well, I'm not going to be doing any beekeeping or machete videos in this. Let's find something else to do. Show flowers for Equip to Endure. Of course, the weather sucks again outside, so I can't get to the videos I wanted to do. So today, I'm going to go over my little travel fishing kit. Um, I got this container from the clearance section at Walmart.com. Here's one in pink. There's Adam's color. He's going to try and steal this from me. Um, compartment travel case made by TheBottleCrew.com. I haven't been able to see them at Walmart recently, but um, I've heard some people are still able to get them. You can see it's compartmentalized. comes really compact. Um, I really like this system for my own travels and my own needs because it's very compact. Of course, there are other fishing kits out there such as this one. This is a PVC pipe version. But uh, I'm going to explain to you the benefits at least of um, mine and, and what I wish was in there and um, how I like it from a practical and a travel aspect. So let's go ahead and open it up and take a, a look at it. And it's important to note that I got this idea from the book Build the Perfect Survival Kit. Now, the book that inspired me to do this is Build the Perfect Survival Kit by John McCann. I met him a couple times. He's a nice guy and he has some really neat ideas in this book. There's a lot of stuff that you know about already, but some interesting, unique ideas too. And it gets you really inspired to start building your kit up. Um, you can see where I got the idea from here on this page. There's a kit right there. Check it out. It's a pretty neat book, especially if you're a gearhead and you like to make your own kits. Everything from building small containers to full-size bags for your vehicle. It's a very neat book. Okay, so let's break through this puppy. Now, you'll notice that there are rubber bands on the outside here. That's because, um, you know, these latches aren't that sturdy, and I don't like opening this up and having the um, hooks just fall everywhere. Um, it's got two sections, one larger section and one smaller section here with one, two, three, four, five. Um, little sections here and a bigger one over here. Um, on this section, personally, of course, because everybody fishes different, I've included weights to go on my line. Um, I'm trying to look at this from an aspect of what's going to be really, really hard to find and moving from the really hard to find stuff down to the basic stuff um, and just having it to have a, um, a nice look to it or a nice practical feel to it, to what I'm normally used to. These particular small little weighted dart um, guys, um, I've had good luck with with a lot of different fish species, um, just twitching it on the bottom or, or pulling it through. Um, it's not a spinnerbait based um, lure, so it doesn't have to be pulled along. Um, you can dangle it in front of a fish and finally even annoy it enough to the point where they snap on it. We have various sizes of hooks here. We got um, everything from the Aberdeen style to um, the bent style with the double, double um, barbs on it. <clears throat> Coming from an entomological background, I'm able to find bait pretty quickly in most um, places. Maybe not Alaska or something where the ground's frozen, but pretty easily I'm able to find bait. I've got some lures in here, um, just in case I'm not able to. Over here on this side, I've got larger. Um, hooks. Now, if I'm not kidding around and I really want to eat food, um, and of course regulations comply, you know, some, some places are even barbless, I'll use these treble hooks. These are these triple hooks and I'll hook a worm or some type of larvae onto each side here and throw it in there and it most definitely will kick them. Um, what this is really good for is for um, traps that are, um, you know, lever based that pull up um, because this is going to hook them almost every time somewhere. Um, I have even larger hooks in here too if I'm trying to catch something a little bit bigger like a turtle maybe or something like that. And I hope the turtle tastes good. Um, these are larger treble hooks of course. Um, there are smaller hooks. We'll talk about those. There are smaller hooks in here and in here um, for catching smaller fish such as panfish or stuff like that. And that's probably going to be the target species are these smaller fish that you can catch a bunch of to fill yourself up. In Peru's case it was piranha. Um, these are just nice little knickknacks that I put in here. Um, one's a fly. Uh, the bonefish in in, um, in Belize uh, didn't hit anything except topwater stuff, and I was able to catch one small little tiny bonefish uh, with this. And this is just in case everything is just going haywire and they're hitting stuff up top, maybe to try and throw this out. I'm not really good at fly fishing, um, so I don't have a lot of flies, but I'll probably pick another one up. Um, little egg-shaped sinker here. Maybe I have a very deep area 
and um, I really wanted to get down to the bottom. I'll use this to go right off off the bottom, like for catfish or something. I saw this just hanging out in my toolbox, and I was like, oh man, that would be really handy. So I threw it in there. You can attach it on the back of sapling. You can even get it to where you can spin with it, um, utilizing this booger right here. Um, just screws right in that piece of wood. Nothing cool there. Go over to this side. Take a look at what we got in here. All right, now, in a perfect world, I'd probably am going to pick up one of these smaller um, lures than this guy. A, because he's getting all tangled up during the video, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but B, because uh, this is a little bit more current dependent. And what I mean by that is I want to set this up in a current, like in a creek or something. If I'm just in a lake where there's not a lot of current, it's just going to hang out there. And it's not going to um, emulate a uh, back wa a uh, back swimming um, crawdad, which is what this thing is, in case you can't tell. Um, you can't tell because it's still tangled up in this stuff here. So I'm probably going to change this out just because it's such a large lure too. Um, it's kind of not needed. Um, but I like it. I'll carry it in there, you know, take a sapling, go back and forth. And I'm able to get a couple hits off of this. But this is just a lure to have if I can't find any bait. It's kind of big. I like to have one with a little bit more like appendages hanging out and stuff. And there's smaller versions out here. Um, I have clear line in here. This is... Um, the uh, 10 pound XT tough stuff by uh, Berkeley. Um, I think it's by Berkeley. Uh, anyway, I put it on my uh, fishing rod. Um, it's pretty good. It's pretty, pretty um, tough too, of course. Um, I don't like that stuff that just snaps when you when you're trying to get something online. If it's a bigger fish or some other item, target item, you're not going to have a good time. Uh, these are really important. These are snelled hooks. They already have a little bit of a monofilament attached to them. These have multiple barbs. They're already set up. And the cool part about these, friends and neighbors, is that you can set these up on a trot line with your extra, with your extra line really, really easily. You don't have to have the swivel snaps, although they're nice. You can just set these up across the creek or something and catch quite a large number of animals pretty quickly. As I'm starting to get my nose stuffed here. All right. More snelled hooks. Um, I have some smaller ones too that I'll put in here just depending on where I'm going. Um, these are kind of big uh, for trout or something like that. Bobbers, of course you can use a piece of wood when you're out in the wild. Um, I figured, well, I got the room for it, why not? I like these little slide bobbers, they're kind of neat. Um, they don't have to go all the way through a piece of, uh, of um, filament to get through there. I can weave them on a certain way. I got two of them just in case. Um, these are much larger stuff. Uh, something that I could hook a, a small animal on, not just a fish, or a big fish, of course. If I get like one of those big old best beetle grubs, I can throw it on there too. A uh, neat, handy little thing to have, not, not completely important, but I like to have it in there just because I was able to get one at the TSA auctions. This is a, um, a thinner um, Swiss Army knife, I guess it's, what is it, the princess model? You guys can tell me. Um, I can't remember, just a -Lox. Um, so it's a little bit thinner. It's got those scissors, which are really, really handy. Of course, a blade and a, a fingernail scraper um, right there. But the scissors are very, very handy just to keep, you know, attached onto you while you're rigging your stuff. Now, this is the kicker. I think this is the most important feature for me. Um, not the thimble itself. We can show you a different way of attaching it. Here's a tip to get a small bobbin um, wound up really, really tightly. You can see here I have this in an Eppendorf tube. Um, and this is a chopstick wrapped around with this monofilament, or not monofilament, this uh, green line. Once again, I don't use these green lines on my open face reels just because they act different and I'm not used to them. Um, other people use them a lot. But they're great for everything else, at least in my book. Um, put the cap back on the Eppendorf tube. Now, you'll use something with the motor. The best thing to use, of course, would be a drill because you can selectively take the speed of that um, and, and wind it quick or slow, depending on how you want I don't have my drill with me, I just have my Dremel tool, so I'm going to use this um, carefully. Also, you know what we're going to do? We're going to cut this ahead of time. I'm going to go ahead and measure out 25 yards. Use your magic imagination and pretend that this is just 25 yards that I cut because I'm not getting 25 yards on that screw. All right. Take it in the slot and then tighten it down. You can use a screw, you can use a bobby pin, you can use a toothpick, you can use whatever you want. And then 
You want to, of course, be careful with the Dremel because it'll go around this. Just like that. Long story short. And that's how you'll get something up to this point. Um, I suck mine in the tube here just because I can pull it out this way and I don't have to worry about it uh, becoming all frizzled or anything. And it keeps it clean and nice. So there's a tip for you. Now, I'm not a professional fisherman, so this is just stuff that I've used that I like. Um, for the translucent monofilament, I like this extra tough stuff. It really drives me nuts when you can just take some monofilament and break it in your hands. How are you supposed to catch a big fish with that? Um, this stuff can get, you know, braided on rocks and whatnot, and it's not going to snap right away. Um, I use 10 pound test, that way I can tire out a fish. It's just what I use on my open face rods. I don't use this green um, this green uh, microfiber stuff just because I guess I'm not used to it. It just kind of gets tangled up in a way that's different. But man, do I love it for camp. This is 50 pound test. Um, it's a little bit more expensive, but I think it's completely worth it. I mean, you can bring in a small alligator with this. If you weave two together, who knows what else you could do. Um, it's great for stitching up packs, uh, which will not come apart after you do this correctly. Um, great for using it online on trot line. It's not going to break. Um, it's really, really cool. It doesn't really matter what company I've found so far. Um, I'm liking this Easy Braid stuff just because I can make knots with it a little bit better and use it around camp. So I've chosen this spider wire stuff. But 50 pound, man, that stuff's awesome. Check it out. If you can't find this little partitioned case made by BottleCrew.com, uh, don't let that stop you. There are plenty of other items such as these guys where sinkers or hooks came into them or even this guy where a whole slew of lures came into them so that you can make your own kit with those. Don't let this stop you. Now, just from doing this video and going over my kit out loud, there are some things I'm kind of nitpicky about. One is this. Just having this is just a mess inside my case. I'm going to figure out a way to put it around a bobbin too or something like that just so it doesn't get caught up in the hooks. Um, two, of course, we talked about these lures earlier. I'm going to get something a little bit more natural looking. Um, three, I probably, probably would like to get just some more bait items in here. I only got these guys, this, and this as an artificial attractant. I'd like to put some more stuff in there so I don't have to depend on finding a um, invertebrate to put on top of a hook. But what I figured the most thing um, I'm going to need out there is hooks. I'm going to have line out there, of course, in, in this and then, of course, uh, the monofilament. But I bring a lot of this out there anyway just for k fixing camp items. Um, but having hooks out there, I think, is going to be the most important. I'll be able to improvise most stuff for the most part between uh, hooks and line though I'm really 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 set um, from there it just you know kinda compounds on, along itself but it becomes a very very nice compact package that I can just throw into my bag into my luggage and not have to worry about it a bit more compact than this thing um, weights about the same I mean I got these freaking uh, sinkers in here of all different sizes so um, it's not really that big of a deal. It's not too heavy or anything to be cumbersome. I break it when I'm backpacking and all that. So this pretty much covers my kit. Now, it's not the most perfect kit out there. If you have any tips or anything, put them down in the comments below. If you have any questions, send them to joe at equiptoendure.com or questions at equiptoendure.com. Don't forget about my Amazon 5000 trip, amazonjoe.stayclassy.org. And remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared.